somehow that still is a, an issue for our band after 15 years. It's still an issue that we don't sound, we don't have blast beats in our music anymore, and we don't, we're not heavy, even though we've we've broke all these barriers and done all these things and achieved like you know, musically things that I never thought would we'd achieve, and so proud of what we do. But at the same time, a kid on social media can just go, "This is complete shit," and I can be like, "You little bastard." <laughs> I apologise if you feel something is the first track on the record. It's a bit like a overture, opening piece to the record and um, one of the last things we wrote actually. Yeah, it's lyrically it's about, it's kind of talking about the whole theme of the album which is love and stuff and it, I'm going to obviously talk about a lot of different things in every song, but the, I guess the message is that like love is worth fighting for, and it's not it's not something you should compromise in terms of like what you have. Like you should be able to find something pure and something that you value and cherish, and you, you feel thankful for ha having. And if you don't, then you should fight you know fight hard to to get it to that point or to find something else. And um, yeah, I, I guess my worry was people thinking I've, I've had a negative viewpoint on, on love because that's not at all the case, you know what I mean? I think it's just, it's it's everything, you know what I mean? So it's gotta be, it's, it, I don't think, I think if you don't have love, life's not worth living. It's kind of a different, we've not really done anything like that before musically, yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like a hymn kind of thing, yeah. Weird, weird start and then I think the, the when it kind of comes in, it's almost like an overwhelming rush of emotion. I think that's what it's kind of, it kind of goes alongside the the lyrical theme, so yeah, it's 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 almost like a half song, half hymn to represent the whole album. But yeah, we kind of wanted to tick a couple boxes at once. We wanted a, a song that sounded like that, and we wanted something to open the record, and it had to lead into Mantra, which is a very different type of song. So yeah, it was a bit of a difficult one. It came really really late on when we we're in the mixing process. But yeah, as soon as we had, as soon as we got it, we were like, yeah, this is this is how we want to open the record. Uh, mantra was kind of like came through maybe like halfway through the process. It really stemmed from me having a bit of a little meltdown about not feeling like we had anything. We did have stuff. It was like there was like a little voice in my head saying like, "What are you going to show the world first? And we had all these amazing and weird ideas and stuff and a couple of songs, but it were like we didn't feel like we had that song. We were like, "Oh, this will just." It's a comeback song, really, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of so we, that we started to write it with that in mind. It's like, right, what would we show the world first? And, and from that, it came quite quickly, actually. We wrote the, the, musical, the musical aspects of it, you know, I think, in a day. And um, we were just buzzing off it. And I, we one of them things like we knew straight away, even before like the, you know, the, the lyrics and the, the rest of the melodies and everything came together. We're like, this is it, this is the... It was, I think it was pretty quick. You came back with the idea of the lyrics pretty quick, didn't you? Mm. I think only like a day or two. And, and the lyrics, the whole kind of lyrical concept for that song came pretty quickly, so it felt like it was, it fell into place relatively easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had, and and soon as soon as the, we got the kind of like, I think when we got the little mantra kind of, Siri, thing drop thing, as soon as that was in there, I was like, this is this song's cool. <laughs> Nihilist Blues um, is my favourite song on the record. Most people I show is we show is it's it's the favourite. It's my dad's favourite anyway. But um, we kind of had your dad in mind when we were making it. Yeah. His dad like loves like cyber stuff like Snap. And, yeah. And, and He's into like Faithless and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Isn't like he? And, like dark, any, anything euphoric. that's got, got that kind of pillhead vibe. He really likes for some reason. He's not a raver either. He's, He's just got a, a very strange taste in music. <laughs> yeah. But there's not a song on the record that sums it up, what's whatsoever. So it's been so hard like releasing songs because we're like people are like mantra. People are going to think, oh, the, the st sticking to the roots, medicine. Oh, they've gone way too poppy. And we, and there isn't a song on the record that sums it up. But I think that one sums it up in terms of like, forget whatever you think it were gonna sound like, because this is gonna change your mind and the rest of the record's gonna do that too. 
Yeah, and obviously Grimes is on there, which is rad, and she kills it. And she just put a little stamp on it and a signature, I think, like... She's got that kind of ethereal quality to her voice, hasn't she? Yeah. So. And, I mean, she vibed off the song so hard that she just, you know, she put a lot into it. And she, I mean, right up to the end, you know, to that final mix, she had, she had, she had a lot of input and she was very, you know, she just cared a lot about it. And there's little, little sounds and licks and ad-libs all the way through the song that she just kind of gave us and, and we just loved and just gave it that extra, that last bit of, you know, Magic. Yeah. In the dark is. I don't know, we're going to learn a very different song. Yeah, it's very different. It's kind of like a steady, different type of pace that we wouldn't normally do. It's, it's kind of like a dark pop song, like, I guess. But it's, it's a weird mix, another, another one that's like an unusual fusion of different sounds, because it's got this kind of stonery guitar yeah. riff in there, and, but it's got these other bits that sound like Red Hot Chili Peppers or something. <laughs> so yeah, we loved that song when we got it. That was, one, that was a song that we were battling with for ages. Mm -hmm. It was a completely different song. Um, and when we, when we got to LA, we, we, we kind of almost rewrote it from the, from the ground up. N none of the original song even made it in there, did it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think like, I think like groups like Taming Parlor and stuff like that have proven you can still make that kind of rock music for anyone. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and mixing that, that pop element with it and still making it interesting. And I think like artists like that really inspired this song where it's like, we do love like making pop music, but we want it to be like some still like, but what does it sound like? And I think this, this song has got that. So yeah, and again, another song that we didn't think would be so Front loaded on the c CD, but it just again felt like oh, we want we want people to hear this one soon on, and up front. So yeah. We had three guests in mind. Like we wanted it to be a num like that number for some reason, and also we wanted someone from the heavier world, like our world, I guess. Um, but we didn't really want just uh, someone, one of our peers, either. Or our really, mates. Or, or, mate, yeah, yeah. or someone you just go, oh, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like We wanted something where you'd look at it and be like, why and how how and, and what's going on? Because that's kind of what the whole album, the vibe we want the whole album to, yeah, give, to give off. not put your thumb, we just don't want anyone to ever be able to th at least think they can put the thumb on us and go, this is what they're trying to do. Or this, you know what I mean? I think people get this misconception that we're ashamed of where we came from or whatever because of how much we changed. But at the same time, we're not. We love that stuff, but we just, we've been there, we've done that, we want to do other stuff. But at the same time, it's like when we first started this band, it was like bands like Cradle of Filth and stuff that would just be like a dream to have on our CD. So the fact that we're in a place where, you know, we can, we can, we can achieve that is so cool. And also, there was a bit of a, like, my thinking was like, if he says no, then that's good. It shouldn't happen because I kind of had a, maybe a pre, like with all of the people we asked a preconception that they just wouldn't do it because of who we are and who they are. And um, you know, I don't know if you know he might think, what are my fans going to think? Because they're not going to like this rock band gone pop. And I've always felt like that. You know, I didn't know him that well. I, I didn't know him. Met him a couple of times or whatever. But I always felt like there was a bit of tongue in cheekness to everything they did, you know what I mean? Like the music is quite serious and dark and, you know, heavy, but like the t-shirts have always been, you know, like funny as fuck. Like they'll just be like a nun getting boned by Satan or, you know, Jesus a cunt and just like, always just like, just feels like they're ever so slightly just ribbing their audience as well as, do you know, the rest of the world. And so, yeah, it was kind of like, if he says yes, then that'll be sick because it'll just be, it'll just be special. But if he says no, then that's, it, that was meant to be sort of thing. And, he was just down, you know what I mean? He didn't, you know, bat an eyelid. He was like, even when it came to the video, it was like, let's, let's just do something fucking funny. And he was up for all the ideas I had and just, just a proper cool sound dude. And I've always just thought his voice was sick, his, his high screams and stuff like that. And it just, yeah, again, just, yeah, just one of those things I thought would be weird and wonderful. <laughs> Kind of like an almost like an interlude, really. It was uh, 
it was an old, the vocals like was on a different, you know, demo that we never, we never end up using, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it kind of is almost like a, a precursor to the next song, but it's almost like a song in its own right. So, yeah, on this album, we wanted to, we wanted a couple of interludes so we could experiment a bit more with some different sounds and not have to feel like we need to structure them necessarily into songs. It's or, like jams and... They're almost like jams, yeah, or be able to set the tone or, or like reset the tone after the song before especially because it's so varied so so yeah we kind of used used this one and fresh bruises as, as an opportunity to do that you need a taste of your own medicine cuz i'm sick to death of swallowing yeah it's probably like the most i guess it's the most poppies thing we've got on the album i would say but yeah yeah we, we, we when we wrote it we just really liked it and we were just like this is this is a cool song so um yeah, we wanted to, it was always, always going to be on the album, wasn't it? Yeah, and like lyrically, is you know, it's dealing with um, like toxic relationships and how the worst of them are always ones that you, when you're in them, you don't, you don't see how bad they are. And when you get out of the, and you look back, you're like, whoa, everything I thought I knew and, you know, thought I was feeling was actually completely wrong. Like being blinded by love. Or yeah, and, yeah, and um, so it's dealing with that, so, I really didn't want it to be an angry song, you know. I think any time we're like dealing with that issue and, and talking about, or well, I didn't want any kind of like, I didn't want it to feel like there was any re residual anger or like, because it's just not the case, but at the same time, it's like, I think you just want to unload and stay, do you know what I mean? So it felt like it needed to be a really positive, poppy song. That felt like the only way I could say what I needed to say. We can't have a struggle. But the situation is in control So play pretend that it's okay You can tell the Messiah This song kind of veers off the topic of love in terms of like personal stuff the most and it, it, it's, it's more talking about us as a society and a, and a, and a world and how we want people being narcissistic and that kind of yeah and and i guess people's interpretate how everyone's got a different idea of what love is everyone has quite strong morals and beliefs these days which is brilliant but i think sometimes people are a little intolerant that you know that they think that only theirs is important so you know like if you think that you should vote in, and and you tell everyone else they're wrong for not voting but that same person might eat meat where that other person thinks well, you're killing animals. Why would I vote for any of these people if they're all supportive of, of that stuff? Do you know what I mean? And people are so like a, a little bit intolerant and a little bit like not not understanding of other people's you know beliefs and and, and where we want to push things forward. And I think that's what this song is about. Like obviously the chorus is like we're so full of sugar, honey, ice, and tea, which is something my dad used to say instead of swearing. And um, yeah, it's just I mean, and but at the end of the day, it's. It's like, you know, it's not something to get angry about. That's just the way of the world. That's how we are, do you know what I mean? We all, we all want to fight for what we believe in, but we also don't sometimes want to like see people's, you know, other people's point of view, do you know what I mean? And I think it's quite funny. I'm not a political person. I'm not like, I'm, I'm, I'm not someone who's going to get angry about it either, but I, it is, especially in these times, it's, you know, something that can't be ignored and it's something that I kind of feel like if you don't laugh, you'll cry. So it's just getting all that stuff off my chest, really. So tell me why you gotta kick me when I'm down You better pray I don't get up this time around This is my favourite track on the record. It's another one of those ones that's got a lot of different influences. It almost starts off like a like grime. It sounds so terrible, but it starts <laughs> off like a grime track. I like grime track with like, tr it's got like trappy beats in the chorus and it's like stonery guitar riff and I think I like it most just because it's a load of things that really shouldn't work together in any way. And it, and I think we managed to thread them together in a really cool way. So yeah, it's just, this one's just got kind of a bit of everything. This is probably the track that I feel like sums up the album um, most out of all of them. I think it's the coolest song on the album as well. Yeah, and I think. It, it's kind of the only, it's the only song we've ever done, I think, where we've, where we've kind of specifically like, it's written about our relationship with the fans, or at least Ollie's relationship with the fans, and that that gives it some kind of different uh, potency that that I've not had, had from different other songs. It's quite personal because I can understand, you know, I can appreciate that sentiment as well. Uh, 
Fresh Bruisers is a somewhere in between a track and an interlude, I guess. Um, it's kind of like a jam. A little jam. Yeah. Um, just a little tune. It's a little, little banger. I really like it. Again, it's... I mean, we're actually playing it on our last tour as our outro for the whole tour because we knew no one would have a clue. They would just think it's just some random song. It just came over the PA, but yeah. So, no, yeah. No one clocked it, obviously. It's, that's the song on the record that's borderline impossible. Like, you know, we always claim that, like, you still know it's Brimley Horizon, but this one, maybe not. And just, like, I think there's just some musical things we wanted to get off our... You know, we just wanted to do so badly that, like we said before, with the last record and stuff, just felt like it wasn't... You, there's just no chance of it doing it without it just being completely eternal, like eternal and the mess. And uh, this record, because of the variation, it's like shit. We can do this now. Yeah, and it's cool. It's just got. It's just we just like the groove, really, didn't we? And the, and the kind of vibe of the of the drop, just like steady kind of pulsating thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is one of those ones where we thought, well, let's just let's just do what what we feel like we want to hear on this one, rather than try and force it into having some kind of structure. It does have a structure, but I mean, it's, it doesn't have it. Doesn't go verse, pre-chorus, chorus. You know, it's just it's just kind of a a, a groove more than anything. It's kind of a love song, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, it's very much a love song. It's the loveiest song I think I've ever written. The most like just like you know, heart on sleeve type. Don't really care if about trying to make it too hidden, that message too hidden or whatever, you know what I mean? And just because obviously that, that is a part of love, you know, when you first, when you first fall for someone, there's that feeling that, you know, can't really be topped of just that giddy excitement, just feel like, it's just like you, you can't get a better emotion than it. And, and you do, you, you, you know, in your head, you're like, I don't want to tell this person all this because they're going to think I'm coming on too strong or, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you just, your whole perspective on life is different, you know what I mean? You love everyone all of a sudden, everything's great. The world looks like a better place and, you know, you've got time for everyone and it's just, I mean, if you could, if you could bottle that feeling, it would be um, a good it'd bottle. Be, it'd be a nice bottle. <laughs> This one was coming, to, came towards the end of the process, didn't it? And it was, mm -hmm. so, I think it was started off as a, a bit of a piss take for us, really. And then we, <laughs> and then, then we just really liked it. We liked the kind of vibe of it, so we just went with it. And I guess it's another one of them songs that is slightly self-referential for us, which is again something we haven't really, wouldn't really do before. I guess we're, there's, there's all this bemusement and also like somewhat indifference in, to just where we are. And, and who we are in bed with and you know everything it's just so funny for us because we were just we just came from such a different place to any of the people around us and all this stuff so we're just so like it almost feels like you're always just trying to sum it up and you know on a massive record label and you know having all these people that work for us and do different things and then having all these fans and getting new fans all the time but also having still feeling connected to those people that you know like our first album and the fans that have from back in the day like we still feel like I guess we've always had this, not chip on our shoulder, I don't know what the right... It's just thoughts that enter your head, isn't it? But, like, we've always, like, been wrong. Like, everyone's always gone, they're not right. Like, when we were a metal band, we weren't metal enough, you know? We weren't, we didn't, we weren't allowed in that scene or whatever. And then every step of the way, it's like, we're wrong. You're not welcome. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and now it's just, and it's still the same, and I still feel like... Not that we, we want to like go, yeah, we are, we're part of that, but at the same time, it's like, somehow that still is a, an issue for our band after 15 years. It's still an issue that we don't sound, we don't have blast beats in our music anymore, and we don't, we're not heavy, even though we've, we've broke all these barriers and done all these things and achieved like, you know, musically things that I never thought we'd, we'd achieve and so proud of what we do, but at the same time, a kid on social media can just go, this is complete shit, and I can be like, you little bastards, like how, like you know, and just, and it just, and it's just funny, like, and I, I bet kids don't realise how much they do have an effect on us in the forums. Sometimes that we'll read, and the word, words and sentences, they'll never realise that we're reading, and we are, we're still there, and we're still, you know, living and breathing in it, and it's just, but at the same time, it's just funner. Do you know what I mean? It's funny. It's, it comes off you and end, and you, but 
I so guess it's, it's just a chance to bottle that all of that feeling and all that stuff that goes through your head and use it to at least make a little song. Right? Yeah, and just yeah. address it and just have a, have a joke about it. And I think it's a song that it's not, you know, it, I think the people who are, it is addressing, uh, uh, who knows, but I almost feel like they're, they're going to laugh about it too. They're going to be like, fair play. Do you know what I mean? Because it is, it is directly addressing them. And it's a cool, important part of our history as a band, like where we've come from and who we are now and stuff. And I think it's, it's, it's cool that we can write a song about like that. I think even just the lyrics alone, like, Wow, that's something that definitely we wouldn't be, wouldn't be addressing or, I guess, like putting out in that in that sense because it would just be too, it, like I mean, even when I was telling Jordan the ideas for the lyrics, you were like, really? <laughs> like you're gonna say that? <laughs> the song's about my friend Aiden who, who passed away from cancer, and it's kind of just dealing with, like the title suggests, not knowing what to say in a, in, in a situation like that. And when someone's, you know, basically being told they're going to die and it's over and that's it. It's weird because you can't, you know, one thing when people are going through t tough times, it's like, it's going to get better, it's going to be OK. But when, you, when you've no longer got the power to say that, what do you say, do you know what I mean? Um, just like anything I go through in my life, it, I think it was something that I felt like I wanted to talk about because obviously it was, a, Childish friend, and it's a massive thing. And but also just him in particular, the way he dealt with what he went through was just so mind blowing. Do you know what I mean? To, and just something I can't imagine myself doing. Like if I if I if I got struck with uh, something like that, I would. I'd, I feel like I'd be more selfish or or like scared or whatever. But he was, you know, he kept the family, his family together. He seemed to not accept it, but at the same time, like he would never, you know angry at the world for whatever doing and always just saying like I've had an amazing life and I'm so glad I've, you know if I don't make it it hasn't won cancer hasn't won I've won do you know what I mean because I haven't let it destroy me and just I just it's just and, I, and, and you hear about that stuff a lot and I just think it's it's crazy how people become so powerful when they're at the weakest and um, yeah I guess it's just it's just celebrating them as, as best as I, as I could put into words you know